Hi guys, it is miserably hot. Here we go, triple digit, another triple digit day here in South Austin, Texas, and probably around half the rest of the country at least. And uh, so this rant is going to be a global warming rant. This is a rant from what I just finished my rant about the JFK assassination from the shallow end of the Doomsday Prophecy pool. I'm now going to wade a little bit deeper into the Doomsday Prophecy pool where uh, you know, I, I, I'm prophesizing the, the total collapse of this entire planet. And uh, this is uh, so it's a rant about global warming, which is pretty much just going to be me centering on a Rolling Stones article, Rolling Stone magazine article, which will be actually coming out next week. But you can find it on the internet and already. And I want to thank my buddy Mark in California. Uh, for sending me the link to this Rolling Stone article, this long, involved, very well written Rolling Stone article, which should be required reading for every uh, for every single global warming denier, head up their ass, global warming, climate change denier on this planet, starting none other than my buddy Alex Jones, who will never mention this story. You better believe of all the stories that Alex Jones will be talking about the next week, this one from Rolling Stone magazine will nowhere be mentioned. Uh, and it was written by a fellow named Bill McKibben. I, you can find other, uh, you can find plenty of YouTubes, just, just Google or YouTube search Bill McKibben M-C-K-I-B-B-E-N. Uh, he's a great guy uh, trying to, uh, you know, spread the truth about global warming. And, and finally, Rolling Stone is taking this, uh, the most mainstream of, uh, you know, if reflection of our culture magazines would be Rolling Stone. Uh, so kudos to Bill McKibben and Rolling Stone, Jan Winter and, and that gang for for uh, printing this article and I will certainly put a link to it so uh, you can find the link to this very well written, well researched, uh, perfectly sensible article. So my rant is I'm just going to read you parts of this article which you can read for yourself. I'll read you just the opening to it and then I'm going to skip through its five full pages and I'm going to, just in case people don't get to pages, deep into page three and four, I'm going to read my favorite part of the article. And you can read the rest yourself, but you're welcome to stick around and listen to me read it with my new, my brand new one dollar made in China plastic glasses that I bought at the Dollar Tree yesterday so I can see. Okay, and uh, uh, this is just the first para uh, first couple of paragraphs. Uh, he actually released this on July 19th, but it, I think it'll be coming out officially next week in Rolling Stone. If the pictures of those towering wildfires in Colorado haven't convinced you or the size of your AC bill this summer, here are some hard numbers about climate change. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have given you the title of this article. The title of this article is Global Warming's Terrifying New Math. Three simple numbers that add up to global catastrophe and that make clear who the real enemy is. And um, so June broke or tied 3,215 high temperature records in the United States. That followed the warmest May on record for the Northern Hemisphere, the 327th consecutive month, that's month in a row, 
which the temperature of the entire globe exceeded the 20th century average, the odds of which occurring by simple chance was 3.7 times 10 to the 99th, a number considerably larger than the number of stars in the universe. Well, you say galaxy. Um, Meteor meteorolo meteorologist reported that this spring was the warmest ever recorded for our nation. In fact, it crushed the old record by so much that it represented the quote largest temperature departure from average on any season on record blah 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 so what he does guys and you need to read this for yourself cause uh, this this is a very detailed article is he's looking at breaking down the numbers of uh, and then of global warming and, and what I'm getting ready to say is a grotesque oversimplification but it's the gist of what he's saying and you can get you can dot your I's and cross your T's by yourself but, but, but roughly what he's saying is, is you have heard this number about this two degree centigrade rise in global warming that anything above that will, uh, will, will, will be a global environmental catastrophe unseen uh, ever in, in, human, uh, in human history. Uh, but what these climatologists are claiming, what is going to push us to the edge is if we continue to burn uh, fossil fuels at the rate we are burning and make no mistake about it guys, the reason for global warming, the present day global warming that we're seeing right now outside your window that I'm seeing on this rock is from the burning of fossil fuels. And so what, what the scientists are saying, which is explained in this article, is that if we burn roughly 500 more gigatons of carbon, of fossil fuels, if we, if we burn enough fossil fuels to send up more than roughly 500 gigatons of, of CO2 into this atmosphere, when we do that, that is the point that we cross the point of no return. Now there's plenty of scientists who would say, and I tend to agree with them, that we have already crossed the point of no return, but, but everyone pretty much, any climatologist, climate scientist would, would say that if we dump another 500 gigatons, we can kiss this planet goodbye. It is that simple, guys. And the, and, the, and the other number that he goes into is that the fossil fuel reserves being reported by the multinational energy companies, the fossil fuel reserves being reported by the oil companies, the coal companies, and the natural gas companies, in their known reserves, right now sitting in the ground on tap to be developed and burned in, uh, in our gas tanks and set up in, into this atmosphere, already the known reserves are roughly 2,500, even more than that, but roughly 2,500 gigatons, five times the, the number, the threshold, okay? If we burn one fifth, one fifth of the of the amount of known reserves of fossil fuels, one fifth of them, we will send this planet to hell. We don't need to burn the known reserves. Uh, we need to burn about one fifth of them, where virtually every climatologist will, will, will agree. Uh, except those few climatologists on the payroll of the oil companies uh, that Alex Jones likes to cite in his, those tiny few st uh, climatologists who disagree with his statement. So there you have it.
and it's quite easy but I'm gonna let the, the so so the whole first half of this article uh, talks about the first half of the subtitle of this article you know three simple numbers that add up to global catastrophe that's what most of the article is about and that make clear who the real enemy is now of course I would say that the real enemy is us is every single one of us including yours truly all, although it's about one twentieth of the amount that I used to uh, every single one of us who are plugged in to the burning of fossil fuels on any level we are guilty we are the ones doing this but uh, just as Chris Hedges as I talked about yesterday since he doesn't want to talk about it let's make make clear who the 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 bad guy here if there's any doubt in your mind who the enemy is it is the oil companies and uh, he really gets into this I thought on page three but I'm down deep in this article uh, and I ah, damn it well uh, I guys uh, all right finally uh, all right but what all these climate numbers make painfully usefully clear and this I'm, I'm getting ready to lead, read a bunch here so you can read this yourself or stick with you I, I just like like this part of it because it you know uh, this is Bill McKibben's words that I am uh, reading published in Rolling Stone what all these climate numbers make painfully clear is that the planet does indeed have an enemy one far more committed to action than governments or individuals. Uh, given this hard math, we need to view the fossil fuel industry in a new light. It is the fossil fuel industry that uh, led by Rex Tillerson, CEO uh, of Exxon, that is the bogeyman that is going to kill this planet. Hey, you know, all right. The fossil fuel industry has become a rogue industry, reckless like no other force on Earth. It is public enemy number one to the survival of our planetary civilization quote lots of companies do rotten things in the course of their business and we pressure them to change those practices says veteran anti-corporate leader Naomi Klein who is at work on a book about the climate crisis quote but these numbers make clear that with the fossil fuel industry wrecking the planet is their business model it is what they do this is uh, according to Naomi Klein who's also one of my heroes uh, being quoted uh, in Rolling Stone by Bill McKibben According to the Carbon Tracker Report, if Exxon alone burns its current reserves, it would use up more than 7% of the available atmospheric space between us and the risk of 2 degrees. And then, uh, and then BP is just behind, followed by a Russian firm, then Chevron, then ConocoPhillips, then Shell, you know taken together just these six corporations of the 200 listed in the carbon tracker report and, and that's not all of them uh, would use up more than a quarter of the remaining two degree budget and the fossil fuel uh, industry is clearly cognizant of global warming 
uh, they employ some of the world's best scientists after all. And they are bidding on all those oil leases made possible by the staggering melt of Arctic ice. Uh, which I've said over and over again in rants has been made possible by the oil companies. By the burning of their products is what is what is melted all of this Arctic ice, making their ramping up of the you know of dwelling in the Arctic available to them. I was ranting about this uh, over a year ago. And here it is in the pages of Rolling Stones magazine, just what I was calling out. And yet they relentlessly search for more hydrocarbons. In early March, as I, as I reported about the day it happened, uh, Exxon CEO Rex Tillerson told Wall Street analysts that the company plans to spend $37 billion a year over the next five years, which comes out to $100 million per day, every day for the next five years, searching for yet more oil and gas. I mean, why should we be surprised by any of this, guys? Oh, boy. Uh, that was from page three of the article, and then uh, I'm going to just... So I'm going to continue reading this, but you can read yourself. There is not a more reckless man on this planet than Rex Tillerson. And uh, he's the guy that, you know, who was a, a, was a guest of the Council, of Foreign, Council on Foreign Relations, who just admitted flat out a few weeks ago that, yes, the burning of fossil fuels is responsible for global warming. And his message to the, uh, to the Council on Foreign Relations, guys, and, and therefore to the rest of us on this planet, is just deal with it. Learn to adapt. Global warming is here. Uh, we are the reason for it. He fully admits it. Uh, it is here to stay because you better believe, you better believe that not burning fossil fuels is anywhere on the table for negotiation. He was rubbing it in the face of the Council of Foreign Relations. He's rubbing it in all of our faces. You know, uh... You know, this is this is a seminal. I don't understand why this is not being more widely reported. I'm glad to see it showing up here in the pages of Rolling Stone magazine. This is a seminal. This is every bit a seminal event as, as the you know as the tobacco companies uh, admitting that smoking causes cancer. The obvious fact that smoking tobacco causes cancer. And now the you know the oil companies right here with Rex Tillerson, the single most reckless man on this planet, stating it. Oh boy. So then they talk about his speech, uh, which interestingly enough, the Council of Foreign Relations is is, is described by by Bill McKibben and or his editors at Rolling Stones as a New York audience. A New York audience. Oh boy. You could argue that this, this is Baxton McKibben talking, you could argue that this is simply in the nature of oil companies that having found a profitable vein they're compelled to keep mining it more like efficient, efficient automatons than people with free will, free will. But as the Supreme Court has made clear, corporations are people of a sort. And in fact, thanks to the size of its bankroll, its bankroll being, being every time you take your, your gas-sucking car 
to the uh, to the gas station and, and, and pump gasoline into your car. This is who is bankrolling these evil bastards. Thanks to the size of its bankroll, the fossil fuel industry has far more free will than the rest of us get. These companies don't simply exist in a world whose hungers they fulfill. They help create the very boundaries of that world. Left to our own devices, citizens might decide, although I think all evidence, every bit of evidence is to the contrary, that the brainwashed, hypnotized, addicted, uh, enslaved fossil fuel using global citizenry would not use their free will to decide to regulate their own carbon and stop short of the brink, meaning the brink of planetary collapse. Uh, but we aren't left to our own devices. And then they, and then he goes on to talk about the Koch brothers. Uh, talk a bit, you know, talking about the bankrolling of the GOP candidates, although it might be said you better believe these oil companies are bankrolling the GOP and the Democratic because it makes no difference because they own both uh, team members. It's just that by electing uh, Mitt Romney, there will be absolutely nobody between the public and the uh, and uh, and the oil companies. Uh, I mean, Barack Obama uh, at least does a tiny little bit of lip service to alternative energies, unlike Mitt Romney. But uh, guys, uh, trust me, it doesn't matter. It makes no difference whether it's Barack Obama or Mitt Romney in the in the you know in the White House. It's just that Mitt Romney is a little bit more of a more of a puppet of the oil companies than Barack Obama. A, a tiny bit more of a puppet. Jesus. And, and the sooner we figure this out. Environment back to McKibben. Environmentalists, understandably, have been loath to make the fossil fuel industry their enemy respecting its political power and hoping instead to convince these giants that they should turn away from coal, oil, and gas and transform themselves more broadly into energy companies. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, although I have applauded Shell Oil's efforts to invest their tiny, tiny bit of money in, into uh, in, into uh, algae, bioalgae, uh, my guess is that the oil companies, if you added up every one of their investments into bioalgae, I'm just taking a wild guess here, guys. It would probably equal the money they spend every single day of their lives developing uh, ways to to squeeze more and more fossil fuels out of this planet uh, as they fall all over themselves to uh, to burn this planet up, thereby killing every single person on it and pretty much every species we share this planet with. Okay guys, anyway, I've made my point. Uh, I could go on with this excellent article. Uh, you're not stupid. Go on to this link and read this article and, and if there's still anybody in your life uh, uh, denying global warming and climate change. If you or anyone, you, this should be, as I say, should be required reading. And I got people in my own life, you better believe some of my best friends and probably family members who believe that global warming is a hoax.
and smoking cigarettes cures cancer. Jesus. And with that, I will climb back out of the deep end of the doomsday prophecy pool and sweat my way back to my trailer so I can, uh, let's see, turn on my stove now and burn some uh, natural gas that came from fracking and then uh, at 3 o'clock turn on my little window unit AC uh, which is run on uh, coal power which probably came from mountaintop removal uh, in West Virginia. And uh, so all of you trolls, and I got one yesterday who want to point out what a hypocrite Hambone Little Tail is. Come on, and I invite any one of you trolls calling me a hypocrite uh, because I still use fossil fuels, as I say, about 1 20th the amount of fossil fuels I uh, four years ago. I certainly invite every one of you trolls calling me a, a hypocrite when I fully admit that I'm part of the problem. I take responsibility for my part of the blame in this mess, which is, as I say, about 1 20th the responsibility it was four years ago. Any one of you trolls saying that, you're welcome to come join me in this trailer. And with that, I will say bye guys.